I can remember the Watts riots and you're young and going up on the roof of the garage and looking down towards South Central and you could just watch the fires. You could just watch the fires. You know, I lived in the sort of white burbs, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I had no exposure. So you sort of, all of a sudden, there it was on the cover of Life magazine, you know, and you go, what the heck is this? And then, so you're forced to open your eyes and sort of, and, and you know that maybe it's not all sugar plum fairies and whatever. It wasn't until I got into college that I started looking around and I started considering, well, hmm, career paths and stuff like that. And mind you, back then, college was also staying alive. I, I wasn't in Vietnam because I was... I was from a draft board where literally, I mean, uh, they took everybody. Mm -hmm. So I was motivated just to stay in school for sure. There was a student strike. Was that 69? When did they go into Cambodia? 70. 70. And um, the school was pretty much shut down. I always wanted to, to just sniff around the, the graphics floors and see what they were doing. And, and then there was, so, so there was this opportunity and I just started hanging out. We started working pretty quickly. It was actually spoken that we did not want to do down and dirty, fast, cheap graphics. They wanted to showcase what they've been studying for all these years. So they wanted to do crisp, clean, professional graphics, which I think the body of those pieces sort of reflected more or less, especially relative to a lot of the other stuff. And I think some of the other products, revolutionary poster graphics and whatnot, might have more strength to them. I mean, or, I mean could, but they didn't, they didn't necessarily care even. They wanted, they wanted to put a really, I mean, the content would be as salient as they could make it, but yet they wanted to produce it professionally. Man, we, you're like wearing gloves when you're screening. Mm -hmm. This thing was done super uber clean. There was another piece that Phil had done, and it was the same concept, one word melding into another. This was just taking the same concept and tweaking it with these two words. UCLA and peace and how those words work together, it, just, it was just a, a gestalt that was in the air. The colors used to be more saturated too. The orange was stronger. The blue is probably like it was, but you know, you know, reds fade out of everything. So the orange is less strong than it was. And, and I'm sure we found somewhere, we found the orange paper and we decided to go with the blue against it because those are not UCLA colors. The colors still pop, mm -hmm. they still move but they really moved when they were fresh. We sort of felt hooked into Cal, and our little office had those, you know those white and green computer printouts mm -hmm. of old, those really old, mm -hmm. and people were like, like linoleum, wood blocking, printing prints onto computer, graph, computer paper, and those were posters, and those were completely valid, and we loved them, but we, these people really wanted to do this more anal, you know, crisp graphic. We were up in our little compound, our little office, and it was an afternoon. We had been, we were working on what I don't remember, but that Angela Davis walked in in the afternoon. She just walked in. I don't know. She just, there she was, hair out to here. You know, and she wanted us to do, she had heard about us somehow, or seen it, or tra tracked us down, I don't know how, and, and she sort of hung out there for maybe an hour or so, you know, talking, sparring, sort of like mm -hmm. this, sort of mm -hmm. cueing, I mean, she was like an associate professor there, because I, I can remember auditing a class of hers, and, and she sort of reminded us of the fact that, you know, that it's not just 50,000, you know, Americans that are laying down their lives in this exercise. I mean, there's millions of Southeast Asians that are dying. 
and she just drove it home. And we just sort of took that and said, right on, sister. The photographs, one was a kid, a dead Viet Cong, and his wallet was a photograph of his girlfriend or wife. Oh, another guy holding a baby, and we were just, we were searching for images that would humanize this other erstwhile, you know, demonized, you know, uh, yeah. element. Our country is the same today. You ask for a body count in Iraq, and they say they don't know. I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. Everybody knew that the Soledad trials were coming. There was a sort of a consciousness of they were trying to just keep alive the fact that the government sort of seemed to have it in for the Black Panthers. These people, in some people's minds, were being railroaded because of their political beliefs. That photograph, and I don't know from whom it was lifted, I think was around. The negative and positive again. Look at the graphic on that. They're very designed. It's a much more sophisticated sensitivity towards the sort of the visual. I was auditing Angela Davis's class. It was down in the philosophy building right there across from Murphy Hall. And she walked out onto the stage and there, it was so packed people were sitting in the hall standing up in the back. And she opens with, FBI agents, turn on your tape recorders. The class is about to begin. And, and then she opened with, I don't know if this is true, but we just heard, and it was the day that those Kent State, you know, it had just broken on the news and she wasn't sure even that it was true or what it was. And so she just laid it down. And, and that was the first time I had sat in her class and and so she just said, I'm not even going to talk about, you know, whatever it was I, I was on my sheet, my syllabus or whatever. It was just so right on. She's, she was all about feminism and it's just these glaring injustices that, that were just, you know, it was time with the breakdown in the, the student system, the strike, to address this, just let's get it out. It was really kind of a breath of fresh air. Great time to, you know, be in school and I mean that that's a real education. I've always been sympathetic to anybody that's sort of stepping out there and I mean making a fool of themselves or doing whatever or taking a chance, you know. I mean I mean I mean there's 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 no chance. I mean what type of risk do you take if you play it within the sort of confines of the status quo? I mean you can, and this is pretty safe, but the language and the content had had substance, I submit. It's only valid if, if we as a culture, if we as a society, you know, see it, feel it, taste it, smell it, need it, you know, and, um, and if such is the case, then it's going to, it'll take on whatever, it'll use all the mediums, all the tools at, at their expense, their, that's available to, to, champion and push out. And the beauty of it is that like, you know, you know what osmosis is, it's the saline to the non-saline and you can't stop it. It shall move. Mm -hmm. And if it's truth, if it's just, if it's right, I mean, and that's the beauty of the internet. The toothpaste is out of the tube. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's gonna, you ain't gonna put it back in again.